All right, I have an iPhone 6S Plus here, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a problem. <clears throat> and you may see this on other phones at some point, and, uh, you know, this, I, I didn't really know what was going on myself, but let me switch to the other camera real quick. All right, look closely. Let's see. All right, look closely, all right? I'm going to plug it in. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little streaks, got a little white spot up here, you see that? And the ammeter is drawn 0.93, so it looks like it's probably just charging. Battery symbol should be showing up, but it's not, alright? And no Apple logo or anything like that, no... The, the image is messed up, alright? So being that it's a 6S Plus and this happened after a screen repair, I mean, you know, what's the first thing that you, ever, you think of? Yep, missing components below the, the connector. And sure enough, there's a missing component right here. So, and so let's let's find out what component this is. All right. So if we look at ZXW tools here, we will see that. Let's see, one, two, three. This one. So this is touch to L accelerometer, I guess. Data request connection. Touch to L. I d this doesn't seem like it would mess things up like this, right? I mean, so, but. We'll replace it, and let's see, I mean, that that's kind of a weird, that's kind of a weird one. I mean, that doesn't seem like it affects the LCD at all, you know. But, uh, after I replace this, I'm going to actually, I'm going to take a look to see if, um, I'm going to check diode mode of all the LCD lines, and let's see if we can figure something out here. So, it's important to tin these things. Uh, so that you can get a nice little joint after you put the other one in. I'm assuming the ground one's bottom since it's a pain in the butt. Alright, so let's find out what the value is of this thing. One, two, three, this one. 16 volt, 56 pico fare, 0105. Okay, I'm pretty sure I have one of those. Uh, let's see, 16 volt... 56 pico feared. Okay, I do have some. <sighs> Alright, well. Right, so right there. I'm gonna try to do it with uh, tweezers first, but this is really dinky, so it's gonna be kind of tight. So I, I guess I can probably switch to my zero one zero zero or point one millimeter tips, but uh, I'm a little bit lazy. So I'm just going to stick on my 0.3 millimeter tips here and let's see if we can just dab it. And... So it definitely be a lot easier with my other tips probably. Definitely probably. Uh, that's a nice little shiny joint there, right? That's pretty. All right, so we're good. I'm still a little bit skeptical about this fixing the problem, though, because, I mean, how would that... How would a missing cap for the touch line affect the LCD like this, you know? But I don't see anything else missing except for that, so... I don't see anything else missing, man. A little bit of flux in there, which I'm gonna get rid of. 
Alright, let's do it. Where is my tissue? Alright. So I think we are pretty much good here. Let's let's check it now. Let's see if that's solid. I don't see anything else missing or anything. Like backlight is not blown. Like nothing else going on here. So maybe a little bit long screw damage, but I don't know if long screw damage and the 6S plus affects it or not. So so we shall see. Con. All right. Let's see if we see the battery icon. Nope. That's still not good. Unless my display is bad. Let's let's check the You know what? He has a brand new display here, so I'll just use his. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if this is good. Mm, you know what? I'm gonna check one more display because he he's got nothing on his display. So who knows? Who knows if his display is good? All right. So one more time. Let's one more display. Go get one. Negative. Oh, I still get the lines. See it? Not sure if you can see it or not, but there's like little streaks. Let me plug it in again. See it? See that? Alright, so it's got to be chestnut related, so we're going to have to do some more digging here. Not good. So, we are going to have to figure it out. Alright, let me pause it and disassemble this thing. So, actually, before I disassemble it, I'm going to um, check diode mode of all the, the top ones. Because that would be the fastest thing to do. So, I normally, for 6S, 6S+, Plus, I just normally just go to the top here and, and, and look for these. So, this is 0.47. That looks pretty good. One one two point four one. That looks a little low, actually. And the touch filter number four is dead. So that's probably what's causing everything else to to die. So it looks like he probably blew the he blew the LCM. Okay, so this may be kind of easy as well. Um, all right, so let's. So that was one problem wrong with it. Now we're gonna go with number two. All right, so number two. All right. So looks okay. If you look real closely, look at that. There's a bead of solder right there popping out. So I'm assuming it probably popped out from the probably popped out from one of these that blew. Since we're getting zero, it's most likely the filter. So which one's the filter? That one. Bottom one is the filter. Okay. So, you know what? Let's get rid of this foam first. Let's get rid of the foam. And then... I mean, that doesn't look good already, but if you want to confirm, you can just 
continuity mode, diode mode, and let's see if it beeps. Does not beep. So that's dead. So that's definitely dead. We're definitely going to replace that. And I think that should bring all the other values back up. You know, like the PP5E7, which is low. Mm, so okay. Should really get to ten it some six with some lead it. There you go. Let it solder. Okay, nice little tin going there. Let's clean the old flux off because it's getting gooey. You never really want brown flux, man. It's not good. Brown flux is not good. So. So let's take a look here. Um, so this is a backlight filter. So same values as backlight filter. So we'll just take one of these. Which ones? So we will do it. Let's get a little flux down here. It's a little too much flux. I'm always missing my tweezers, man. Too much flux to not enough flux. So I guess the good thing about the point, point 0.3 millimeter uh, tips is that it really does melt the solder a lot better than the point 0.1. So that's why I prefer using them actually. All right, so let's go to diode mode again, and let's make sure that we are getting definitely getting some here. Oh. Short it. That's not good. Oh, actually, it's in the wrong mode. That was in capacitance mode. So 0.33 is good. 0.61 is good. 1.54. 0.47. I think we're going to be back in business after this. So if you have a bad PP1B7 filter, uh, that's kind of the image, you're not really going to get an image, and sometimes maybe you'll get those lines, but generally speaking, you're not going to get any image at all. So I think we're going to be back in business after this, I hope. So let's use his screen, because his is brand new, and I think it's going to be good. So just, I mean, just make sure that you um, disconnect the power. 6S, 6S Plus, do not, um, do not, there you go. So we're back in business here. Once it charges up, I think it should be good to go. Uh, but make sure you disconnect the battery. 
before you do anything with the display connectors, alright? Because there's power going to the display even if the thing's not turned on, so you can't just turn it off. I don't know what it is about the 6S and the 6S Plus, but I know that the backlight uh, filters and the display filters seem to blow more often than the 6 and 6 Plus, because I was doing it without disconnecting the 6. I was, I was replacing screens without disconnecting the 6 um, and 6 Plus displays back in the days, and it was fine, so long as the thing was powered off, you know. But with the 6S and 6S Plus, it's I don't know what happens, but if it's short, if you short that sucker out, it seems to blow a lot, lot more often. So just make sure you disconnect the battery and you're good to go. All right.